Ladies and gents, welcome back to another video. In front of us, as usual, is a small cardboard box. Inside of it is an iPhone 4S. I'm hoping this one's running iOS 5. That's what it appeared to be on the listing photos for this item. Let's get it opened up. Hopefully it is iOS 5. I guess there's always a chance it could be iOS 6. But if I remember correctly, this should have the original version of iOS on an iPhone 4S. So let's get this thing opened up, see what kind of condition it's in, and find out if we have ourselves a cool vintage device. Let's begin. All right, here's our iPhone. It is inside of an OtterBox case. These were very popular back in the day and continue to be popular even nowadays. Very good cases, they hold up really well. I'm not familiar with this one. I don't know what kind of OtterBox this is. The ones I'm familiar with are the ones that have a plastic front and back that snap on and then they have the rubber that goes around it. So this one's a little bit different, but cool nonetheless. We also have a car charger. So this plugs into the, I believe it's a 12 volt adapter in most cars here in the United States, at least we have these or older models do. I don't think the new cars have them, but that was a way to charge these in the car before they had USB outlets. So kind of a unique antique charger, if you will. But here's the star of the show. This is our iPhone 4S. It is riddled with dust and debris from having this case on. So let me go ahead and give that a little bit of a clean. All right, there we go. That cleaned up pretty well. The screen does have a few scratches as you can see there. Nothing too major and certainly no cracks. Although we may have a little chip down here at the bottom. No, actually that just kind of scrapes off as well. So just some scratches as you can see. And then on the back, similar story and give that a little more there and the back is pretty clean but again a fair share of scratches camera looks very nice up there and the aluminum frame around the outside of the device is in pretty good condition as well as is that 30 pin connector down at the bottom so enough talk let's see if this thing has any power or if we're going to need to get it plugged in and it does have power it's showing us the old style apple logo as you can see there so that means we've got ios 5 or ios 6 if this is an iphone 4s which according to the emc number i believe that it is so we'll go ahead and let this boot up and it may need to charge if we've got low battery i'll get that plugged in but if not we'll go ahead and fly through that setup screen while we wait for that we can actually go ahead and set up this ipad mini that's running ios 6 Super cool device. This is of course a first gen mini. And you know what, we're actually not because here is our 4S. So that thing can continue to sit there. And I do believe this is iOS 5 because we have the lock icon up here at the top. I think that was removed in iOS 6. So let's go ahead and slide this setup. I'm gonna go ahead and fly through the setup screen here. And hopefully we've got ourselves an iOS 5 iPhone 4S. Now, barring any unforeseen circumstances, this iPhone should activate with or without a SIM card. I think the iPhone 4 and older does require a SIM card with or without cellular service on it. I think the 4S is the first one that'll actually let you set up the iPhone without having a SIM card. So I don't know what changed between the 4 and the 4S that makes such a big difference, but it is very nice to not have to go dig out a SIM card in order to set up your iPhone. So this is interesting here. It says it may take up to three minutes. That's kind of an oddly specific number that they give you to set up your iPhone 4S. I believe that is an iOS 5 exclusive thing. While we wait for that, I guess we can continue here on the iPad mini and see what that says because this is definitely iOS 6 because the iPad mini never supported iOS 5. So this one says it may take a few minutes to activate. And that was much quicker than the iPhone 4S. And I'll just go ahead and finish this setup here on the iPad mini so that it can look good sitting on the desk as we talk about the cooler device here, the iPhone 4S. So we'll set that iPad mini right there. And here is our 4S. It is ready to be set up. And we're gonna go ahead and do new iPhone. We're gonna skip the Apple ID step and we are going to agree to the terms and conditions. Of course, we are gonna use Siri, and that right there is our cue that this is in fact an iPhone 4S and not an iPhone 4. 
Another queue up course is the YouTube app. This means we do have iOS 5 and this home screen wallpaper indicates that as well. The iOS 6 home screen wallpaper was this one down here that you can see this is the like lake or water ripple effect there. And the iOS 4 and iOS 5 use this bubble raindrops on glass. So let's head into the settings, general and about. You can see we're running 5.1.1 and this is a 16 gigabyte iPhone. Carrier is AT&T and it is completely fresh. There's nothing on here. There is certainly no iCloud account. While this phone does support iCloud locks, and in fact, if you have an iCloud locked iPhone 4S or iPhone 4 running iOS 7 or later, and then you downgrade it, the activation lock remains. So even though iOS 4, 5, and 6 do not have activation locks, they actually will show up if you have locked and then downgraded. So a little interesting tidbit there. Now let's talk about the 4S. This was launched in 2011. This was Tim Cook's first iPhone keynote as far as I remember. Steve Jobs did the 2G, 3G, 3GS, and the iPhone 4. And in 2011, Tim Cook did the iPhone 4S keynote. Now this phone brought many new things, but it's kept the same old design. This is of course the iPhone 4 design, same shape, same colors. Almost everything about the exterior is the same. The only difference is of course the antenna bands up here at the top. Although there was a refresh of the iPhone 4 which moved the antenna bands, the original version had a single line right here. And that was actually a bit of a problem because many people hold their phone like this. And so you would cover this line down here with these fingers, you'd cover this antenna over here with your thumb, and then your pointer finger up there would cover that antenna. So there was actually a large issue with uh, signal drops when holding the phone like this for phone calls. So they moved these top two antennas over to the side. They actually had a free bumper case program for the iPhone 4. As a result of this, you could get a free bumper case and those are actually pretty cool. I don't think I've ever had one. Maybe I'll try to find one of those because they are kind of a iconic Apple case. I believe they were the first Apple specific cases that they made themselves for iPhones. So that's a little history lesson there, but back to the 4S. So while it maintained the same design as the iPhone 4, the buttons are in the same place. We've got that same mute lock switch. The internals are vastly different. This is Apple's first dual core iPhone. This has an 800 megahertz dual core Apple A5 chip with huge gains in the CPU and a GPU department compared to the iPhone 4. So while the outside looks the same, the insides are significantly upgraded. It does have the same amount of RAM, so 512 megabytes on the iPhone 4S. That's the same as the iPhone 4. Camera got a big upgrade. We went from five megapixels to eight megapixels here. So this is the first eight megapixel iPhone. And we'll go ahead and take a look and a listen here to how the iPhone 4S performs. So here we go on the 4S. This is of course not gonna be HDR footage, which my main setup uses, but we can get a feel for how this video recording looks and how the microphone sounds. Here is our iPad mini down there. So if I were to use this as my main recording device, this is kind of how that would look. And it's pretty good. The colors seem fine. It's kind of hard to tell on this small display here. If we go over to something really bright like these RAM sticks and then back to something darker, it does actually switch pretty well. So um, I think it is a very capable camera and it certainly was back in 2011 when it came out. Once again, this has been the iPhone 4S video and audio quality. We'll go ahead and switch back here. So there you guys got a look and a listen to how the iPhone 4S captures video and audio. I think it's pretty decent. You guys will be the judge. Leave me a comment down below. Are you surprised at how good or how bad this iPhone looks? It's a tiny little device and it is pretty capable and it's a super cool iPhone to have, especially running iOS 5, which brought us so many new features, probably the most important of which is iCloud. So for the first time you could sign into your iCloud account, which meant you could back up your data to iCloud, you could send your photos up there and they would go to your other devices. And you had the introduction of iMessage, which for the first time, Apple included in the iOS 5 update. This would come to every iOS 5 device and it allowed you to send messages over the internet, not requiring an active service. So that meant you could send messages from your iPhone, your iPad, your MacBook, or your iPod Touch. All these devices would get all the messages, the same thing that we are so familiar with today. This is where it started on iOS 5 and the iPhone 4S. So that is a pretty cool feature that came out there in 2011 with the iOS 5 update. 
There's not a whole lot else to talk about here. The 4S was a really successful phone. It was quickly overshadowed by the significantly better iPhone 5, which brought huge performance upgrades internally, as well as a complete redesign. We got the new connector at the bottom, which reminds me that this is the last iPhone to feature that 30 pin connector that you can see right here. And that is a little piece of history for you guys. One more thing to talk about here on the 4S. This started with iOS 5 and it got iOS 6, 7, 8, and 9. So this was the longest running iOS updated phone up until I believe the iPhone 5S extended that range. So pretty good run here. iOS 9 is quite laggy on this device, but iOS 5, 6, and 7 run really, really well on the iPhone 4S. This is a very, very nice device and a true piece of Apple history. One last thing before we go, we're gonna check out those iOS 5 wallpapers. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with them because they basically stayed the same between iOS 5 and iOS 6. Some pretty good looking ones. Here's the one Apple showed off for the Retina display back in 2010. And there are some other nice scenic nature wallpapers here. I think if I had to pick one, I think I like this one a lot. It really pops on that Retina display and it sort of fades into the background on the home screen. And then on the lock screen, it's a very simple design. It complements the white and the black of the UI elements, as well as the silver aluminum border on the iPhone. And of course, the black front and back glass. One last thing I wanna do before we go is to test Siri. This is where it all started. And I completely forgot to talk about that, but yeah, Siri on the iPhone 4S, the first iPhone with Siri. What is the weather right now in Seoul, South Korea? Searching the web for Siri, what is the weather right now in Seoul, South Korea? So that's actually pretty good and very quick that it gave me the results there for the weather over in Korea. So that's a very primitive look at Siri. Of course, it has developed and dramatically changed. We're now about to get iOS 18 with Apple's AI version of Siri, which is supposed to be much, much better. But this is where it all started in the software and the hardware format here on iOS 5 on the iPhone 4S. So there you guys have it. That's been a look at the iPhone 4S running iOS 5, almost exactly the same way it would have launched in 2011. This is a beautiful device and a true piece of Apple history. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, consider sticking around and seeing what new stuff I have to post or going back to my profile and checking out all the old cool unboxing and reviews I've done on legacy Apple devices just like this that have never been updated. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos.